blessed. We are blessed. Amen. Praise God to have a, a special guest this morning. Praise God with us this morning, all the way from Sacramento. Amen. Praise God and uh, Legacy Church in Sacramento. Um, I know Pastor is my aunt for quite a few years, uh, over 30 years, I'd say. Um, and uh, I remember I, he it was. I think your first church was in San Jose, right? Uh, was it Austin? I thought that was second. No, oh, hallelujah. Well, I was going to say San Jose, Austin, but then I guess no. It's Austin, Texas, was his first church. Amen. So he pioneered there in Austin. So praise God. And then he went to San Jose, and then he went to assist. Right. And then he went to Sacramento. Amen. Praise God. But uh, a really close. I consider him one of uh, one of my uh, close uh, rela uh, relations and friendship. Amen. With that I had through the years. Um, and I tell you, what, it's good to have uh, pastors. Amen. That you can uh, call upon and be able to uh, uh, just share what's going on in your life. Amen. Praise God. So. Uh, but I tell you what, uh, he was one of the first ones that I, I called, amen, praise God, right after Pastor Nacho, <laughs> amen, uh, uh, and so, but I tell you what, it's good to have, amen, people that will hear, people that will listen, people that will understand, and I tell you, there's nothing like it, so praise God, and so, that's why we all need somebody, amen, praise God, we all need somebody, and so, uh, uh, to just to share things, amen, praise God, as goes, as life goes on, as ministry goes on. And so, praise God, I still remember when he, we had him for the first time in Turlock, when I was pastor there in Turlock, he came and ministered to us the, there. And uh, Sister Rick and Brother Frank would probably remember that. That was a long time ago, praise the Lord. <laughs> Back in the 90s, amen, praise God, hallelujah. But God is good. But, you know, let's all stand. We're going to give him a warm welcome as he gets ready to come. And I know God gave him a word for us. And, you know, we, uh, well, it was a blessing to go over there. I think we went there like two months ago or something like that. We went to Sacramento. They have a nice building. Every time I go into a, a building, I look around. and said, man, this is a nice building. And it's there, there. they have a nice building there in Sacramento. But praise God. One day we're going to have ours. Amen. Praise God. And so we have to keep uh, focusing on that until then. And God's going to just open the door for us all. But uh, let's give Pastor Ismael a warm welcome, Sister Lisa. We just appreciate you as well. So let's uh, give him a warm welcome. Sacramento now for some time in my wife Lisa. We have three children, one grandchild. And yes, our first church was in Austin, Texas. Yeah, in Austin. And I remember that our building was next to a reptile shop. <laughs> it was, and you know what? Uh, we had a snake this big in the nursery. Yes, we, yeah, because they would escape from the reptile shop. And I remember one day we came to the church, and in the front seat, like right there, we had a, a dragon monitor about this big. Uh, and you know, we didn't have people, but we had dragon monitors. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had some folks here. Uh, but yes, we loved Austin. We were there for several years in Texas. And uh, you know, anybody here from Texas? The Alamo. Oh, you guys are Texans. All right. Praise God. Uh, and so we enjoyed Texas. It was amazing. Uh, praise God. So, praise God. It's good to be here with you guys. Regeneration Church. Yes. Amazing. 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 Now we can. Okay. Ready now? Okay. No worries. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. Now we can, I can, you can hear me probably. Amen. But uh, yes, for us, it's been a blessing uh, to be here with you guys, Regeneration Church. And I'm good to see what God is doing. Aren't you glad what God is doing? Amen. Yes. Um, you know what I want to do today is I want to preach the word of God. But afterwards, what I want to do is I'm going to preach for a few minutes, right? And then I'm going to do an altar call. 
And in the altar call, I'm going to invite you to come to the front. And what I want to do is I want to pray for God's blessing for you, for the blessing of God. So we're going to believe that um, God is going to open his windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon our lives. Do you believe that today? Yes. I believe that. I believe in that. Amen. So I want to pray for that. I want to pray for you guys. And I want to pray for your pastors. For the blessing of God. Uh, uh, me and my wife have been married now 32 years. 32 years. Oof. Good. Almost. Good. All right. 32 years. But you know we met at the Salinas Church. Um, she was there first. I came in second. And uh, I remember being there at the church. And she's, uh, somebody told me. That girl over there likes you. I said, okay, cool. I like her too. Amen. But no, she was actually passing notes during the service. No. Uh, so we met in church. We did meet in church. Um, she was there first. And, um, and we started praying for one another. And, um, you know, I'm not the most romantic guy. I, I proposed for my, to my wife in the hallway of the church. So I'm going to have to redo that one, okay? Um, I did propose to her in the hallway. Of the, at least it was in church, amen, you know? It was a holy place. Thank you, Jesus. It was a holy place. But I remember um, I proposed to her, and praise God, thank you, God. She said yes. Um, and uh, so we set the date for our wedding and all that. And I think it was like a month before we got married, um, I lost my job. I was working for the county there in Monterey County. I know that brother Lonnie, Lonnie, he, oh yeah, he's outside. Yeah, he's telling me about his daughter that is in Marina, which is right there. He said, I used to pass by Marina all the time. And so, um, so I remember that right before we got married, that happened. You know, um, I, I, and they let me go from my job. And so I had to look for another job and I said, my God, what am I going to do here? I was scared to get married, uh, you know, and now I don't have a job. So what is going to happen, you know? And um, the, the, the title of my message today is Jaira. Jaira. There's a, there's a word in the Bible. There's a word in the Bible called that uh, Abraham said Jaira. Jehovah Jireh, or God our provider. The word Jireh, the word Jireh means, this is what it actually means, God will see to it. That's, that's what it means. God will see to it. Or in other words, God is my provider. And so um, for me, uh, at that time, I was a new Christian, and I was getting married, and boy, did I need God to come through for my life. And I remember I, I was a little scared. Well, not a little scared, a lot scared. And I said, here I am getting married. I don't have a job. And um, I came to the church, and, and uh, there was a man in our, in our congregation that owned a business. He owned a, a tile business, construction. And he came up to me, and he said, um, I heard you don't have a job. I said, words to press quickly. I said, okay, cool. I go, yeah, I don't have a job. He said, do you want a job? Yes, I do want a job. He said, have you ever done tile? I said, never done tile. He said, I'll teach you. So I went from being in an office to being in a construction site. And, um, and God provided you know throughout the years of ministry being a pastor my second job has been tile has been you know working in the construction business and a little did i know that god was going to use that god was going to use that to provide for me and that's that's who god is god is a god uh, that provides um I was, I was doing some research, and it was saying that the, one of the top three things that young people, young adults, and adults, uh, what, their main stressors or their main worries is job security, uh, relationships, and health. 
Those are the top three that people always worry about. Their jobs, money, how is God going to come through for me? Or sometimes our relationships, family, you know, we have all those different things that we have in our lives that we want God to help us with our families. And, the, of course, our health. Our health is important, right? And so... Um, so today what I want to do is that we have to understand that God, for the Christian, amen, we have God that takes care of us, amen. We have God that we don't have to worry about. We don't have to worry about because God is the God that takes care of us, amen. And so today I want to preach on that, on Jaira. God, our provider. And so, like I said, after I finish preaching, um, I, I'm going to invite you to come to the front and to pray for you. And I'm, I'm going to share something with you. The blessing of God. Amen. How many of you want to be blessed? You want the blessing of God in your life. Amen. The blessing of God is not always material. Listen to me. There is something greater than material. Because immediately when we think of the blessing of God, we think of material things. That's okay. It's all right. I believe that God blesses us like that too. But there's things that are greater. They're greater than material. So right now, I want you to start thinking. So, okay, God, this is what I want you to help me with. This is what I want you to bless me with. Whether it's material, job, house, financial, health, relationships, whatever it is, family, that is going to be your prayer. And as you come today, uh, uh, after, the serve, after I'm finished, uh, I'm going to ask you to come and don't walk, run up here if you want a blessing, right? And we're going to, I'm going to ask your pastors to help me pray for you. Pray for you for the blessing of God upon your life. Amen. Let's give God a big hand today. Yes. So we're going to look at a portion of scripture uh, where the word Jairus is first mentioned in the Bible. And as you find it in the book of Genesis in chapter 22 and in verses 1 through 14. And this is the story of Abraham. And Abraham, God had promised him that him and his wife would have a son at an old age. And God did come through. Amen. God gave him a son. And then God had told him about this son that he would be the heir. And then that through him all many nations would come through. Amen. So let's, let's look at the word of God. Let's read that. Genesis chapter 22 verses 1 through 14. It says, After these things God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering in one of the mountains, which I'm, I will tell you. That is crazy, right? So Abraham rose early, early in the morning, saddled his donkey, uh, took two of his young men or servants with him, and his son, Isaac. And he carried the word for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place, the place which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and seen the place afar off. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here. Stay here with the donkey and I and the boy will go over there and worship and come back to you again. That is crazy right there. Then Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he took it in his hand, uh, uh, took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went to, uh, together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father, he said, here I am. And he said, uh, behold, the fire and the wood where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Where it was happening here? And Abraham said, God will provide for him, himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. And when they came to the place which God had told them, Abraham built an altar there. 
and laid the wood on there and bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar and on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached it out of his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything now. For now I know that you, you, you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted his eyes, and behold, uh, behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his, by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham um, called that name of the place Jehovah Jireh, or the Lord will provide to us this day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, God. Father, we believe that you are our God. And we believe that, God, everything comes from you. Father God, we believe that everything belongs to you. And we ask today for your blessing. We ask that you would just open your windows of heaven upon this place, your people. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Um, so here the, the Bible says, first of all, that God tested every Abraham. Everybody say tested. Amen. God tested Abraham. He told him to take his son, his only son, Isaac, and take him to this place called Moriah. And to take him and put him on an altar there and offer him as a burnt offering. I mean, I don't think any of us would do that, okay? If God said, okay, um, I'm sorry, sister, what's your name? Vicky. Vicky. If God said, okay, Vicky, take your son and take him to uh, Mount Modesto and offer him there on, the alt on an altar, would, the would that be easy to do? It wouldn't. Probably, we probably, most of us probably wouldn't do it, right? And so here, this man Abraham, the Bible says that Abraham, he believed God. He believed God that even as he would take his son and even offer it to God, the Bible says that here that Abraham, he believed God. In other words, he believed that maybe God would resurrect him from the dead. And so he was obedient to God when God tested him. And I believe that in our lives, God will test us in many different areas of our lives. Amen. And so here, Abraham was tested by God and he obeyed the Lord. And the Bible says that in the midst of his obedience, God did provide for him. God provided for him so that he would not. Uh, um, slaughter his son. Amen. And so we see that God is the one that provided for Abraham. And I believe tonight, I mean this morning, that God is our provider for you and I. Amen. God is our provider that whatever area of our lives that we serve a big God. Amen. We serve an awesome God. Amen. Do you believe that this morning? Yes, we serve an amazing God. And as we serve an amazing God, no matter how difficult the situation can be in our lives, God is able to come through for us, and God is able to help, help you and I. And so one of the things that God desires for you and for me is that we make God our provider our provider, that we make God him our provider, just like Abraham did with his son Isaac. And so today what I want to share with you is just a couple of things that I believe they're going to help us. They're going to help us to make God our provider. Amen. And so I just want to share these four things. They're just very simple. And I believe that as we maybe practice these things in our lives, they're going to help us in making God our provider. Do you want to make God your provider? I'm going to try that again. Do you want to make God your provider? 
Yes, amen. I want God as my provider. So one of the first things I want to look at is see here in Genesis chapter 22 and verse 8. And the Bible says, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself a burnt offering. So one of the first things I want to look at with you this morning is this. That our words are powerful. Listen to this. Our words are powerful. Um, the Bible says that Abraham immediately, when he was going up the hill to offer, offer his son, his son looked back and said, Dad, what is going on here? He said, my son, God will provide. In other words, here, uh, if we're going to recognize God as our provider, your words, my words are very, very important. So what does the Bible tell us? The Bible tells us immediately Abraham voiced it. said, don't worry about it, son. God's got this. Amen. Immediately, what did Abraham do? He said, he declared it. God will provide. Amen. And I believe that it is very important for us, amen, if we're going to make God our pro provider, that it's first, it's going to start with our words. Because there's going to be times in our lives that you're going to find it difficult. And our words will either declare God as our provider or not. Amen. And it's so, so important. Amen. Because there's power in our words. I'm not talking about name it and claim it. There's a lot of people who say, we just name it and claim it. You want us Mercedes? Name it in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's not, that's not, I'm not talking about that. There's other people who say, um, babble it and grab it. Or what is that? Go something. I said, well, forget it then. Uh, just name it and claim it. Okay. So in other words, listen to this. The name of Jesus is not a magic word. Listen to this. The name of Jesus is not a magic word. It's not like, okay, in the name of Jesus, and I'm going to get this. No, it has nothing to do with that. Uh, Abraham declared it. Why? Because he believed it in his heart. Amen. He voiced it. He said, God will provide. Brother, sister, pastors, amen, There's in those times in our lives when it's going to be challenging, it's going to be difficult, we're very tempted to say, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Immediately, uh, you know, in the, throughout the years of ministry, I thank God for my wife because in those times that I'm stressing, in the times that... Uh, there's uh, challenges in the church financially. And, you know, I got to talk to somebody about this. I don't want to keep this in my heart by myself as a pastor. And I thank God that I can go to my wife. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And, but I will tell her all my woes. And she's, eh, God, God will provide. Just like that. And she's like, eh, don't worry about it. God will provide. I go, you're not helping me any. Come on. Be sad with me or something. Amen. Because I have been very guilty of making God smaller with my words. I've been very guilty. That we say, oh, we can't afford that. I, 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 I'm not saying that we can just go buy anything we want, right? I'm not saying that. But I've been guilty with my words. Of, of voicing things that make God smaller. Immediately, when Abraham went up the mountain, he told his two servants, you know what, guys? Me and the son are going to go, and me and my son are going to the mountain, and we're both going to come back. He voiced it. He believed it. And so I believe if we're going to make God our provider, it's going to start with our words because there's so much power in our words. Amen. There's so much power in just believing and declaring the, 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 the blessing of God upon our lives. As you come today, 
regardless of what it is as you come and we pray you're going to declare it. you're going to say god this is what i want from you lord regardless of what's happened to you in the past whatever is taking place financially whatever it is you're going to declare it before god you're going to say god i believe lord that you will bless me en español es la bendición de Dios. Amen. No sé si hablan mucho español ustedes aquí, pero yo hablo español. I said, I should do it in español, Pastor Gilbert. Y Pastor Gilbert dice, pues yo no sé español. <laughs> okay, but it's so important that if we're going to make God our provider, brother, stop making God smaller with your words sister stop making God smaller with what you have voiced I've done it so many times and listen to this our, our declaration will either bless us rob us are you saying that my words can rob me of God's blessing yes it's happened to me your words our words can rob us of the blessing of God so I thank God for my wife God will provide no big deal and I said I thank God for her because I needed that. Amen. So one of the first things, if we're going to make God as our provider, it's going to be declaring God with our words, believing it in our hearts. God, you're going to provide. I believe you are my Jehovah Jireh. You are my helper. You're my strength. You're my provider. You're my everything, God. Amen. Second of all, how do we make God our provider? You have to remember the goodness of God. Brother Matt, he was up here and he was talking about the, the goodness of God. You have to remember the, vo the goodness of God. Um, how does that work? Abraham could not have a son. Him and his wife were older. Uh, I was reading that his wife was 90 years old when she had Isaac. And I believe that Abraham probably said, God, if you gave us a son at our old age, God, you can probably resurrect him from the dead. So he remembered the, the goodness of God. He remembered the, the provision of God. How do you and I make God as a provider? You remember, remember that God came through, through for you. Let me ask you a question. Has God ever come through for you? Let me see your hands. Okay. Do you remember a specific time that you were just like sweating? It's like, oh my gosh, how is this going to happen? I know, I remember there's a lot of those. And then, uh, uh, I, so I remember that I was sweating it, and somehow God came through for us, and he helped us. So what happened, how, uh, so how do we make God our provider? You remember his goodness. You remember that he came through for you when the, the rent was up. You remember when God came through you for you, for you when you needed for your car payment. You remember for, uh, when God came for you, uh, through you, for you, when all those things happened for you you just remember you remember when the, I mean you were you were, you didn't have money and somehow there was a check in the mail I don't know how but there was several years ago uh, we almost lost our home uh, several years ago and um, we were in the verge just on the verge of losing our home um, when there was that economic crash and I remember that uh, we were already really close to that and um, uh, Chase Bank called us 
and it said, um, we don't want you to leave your house. Uh, we, you know, we're going to do something for you guys so you guys can keep your home. Let's give God a big hand. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so, two, three years later, I felt I came into a very difficult situation financially. And I said, God, do it again. You did it in the past. Do it again. You ha it's important that we remember. Let us remember. Remember when God helped you. Remember when God came through for you. Remember. And I believe that's exactly what Abraham did. He remembered the, the greatness of God, the power of God. He just remembered. He remembered how God came through for him. And he probably said, God, do it again, Lord. He probably told God, do it again. And God desires to do it again for us. And bring it back to mind to him. God, I remember, Lord. I remember that time when I needed your help and you came through for me. I remember, Lord. I remember when you did this for us. Do it again, God. Um, several years ago, uh, we were given the opportunity uh, to get into a building. Uh, amazing opportunity. Um, we, we signed a seven-year contract for a building, and um, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I didn't know. It's good that you don't know when you're do what you're doing sometimes. Uh, we just did it. Could we afford it? Not on the books. Not on the books. And um, I called my pastor. I said, what, what do you think, pastor? This is an opportunity. And he said, well, um, take a step of faith. I was hoping he would discourage me, maybe. Um, and we did it. And um, God provided every single time. Amen. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And so what I'm saying here today, your words are important. You have to remember. Remember when God came through for you. Remember the goodness of God. Remember what he has done for you. Uh, third of all, he has to be your source. There's a scripture in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 19. The Bible says, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. So the Bible says, My God shall supply all your needs. Um, I looked up the word supply. The word supply is source. He is your source. Amen. God is your source. Um, how, how do you make God your provider, your blesser? He has to become your source. Your supplier. God knew. I mean, Abraham knew God as his supplier. Now listen to this. Your job is not your, your source. The government is not your source. People are not your source. God is your source. God has to be your source. What does that mean? Um, when you go to a faucet and you turn on the water, water comes out. That faucet has to be connected to something. If you just get a faucet and you turn it on, at Home Depot, nothing's going to come out. 
It has to be connected to a source. You know, I go to Home Depot all the time. Yeah, there's faucets. You turn it on and nothing comes out. It has to be connected to a source. So what does that mean for you and I? God wants to, or he, he's our provider, but he wants to be your source. He wants to be your everything. Um, you have to know the Son of God for the Father to bless you. Christ is our source. Um, sometimes God will allow us difficult situations, not because he's not able. Listen to me. Not because God can't do it. No. God will allow different situations that may be challenging and difficult in our lives, not because he's not able. No, because he wants us to learn to make him our source. Not people, not your job, not the government. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that we shouldn't work, and I'm not saying that. Okay, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that God is our main source. Because we know that this world is temporal, it's unstable, but we know that God is stable. God is uh, always the same, the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? So God wants to be our source. And sometimes that's, that's only going to come through some tears, some brokenness. That's only going to come right here on your knees. Um, we have three daughters. Uh, two of them are in college. One's with, uh, living with us. Um, and one of the things that we try to instill in them is like, look, God has to be your source. Yeah, you're going to school, career, so that's all good. But ultimately, God has to be your source. How did, how did Abraham make God his source? He knew God. He knew God. He understood God. Um, God wants to be our provider. But he has to be your source. He has to be the one that you, you depend on. You depend on God. Because when we put our faith in other things, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, God has to be our source. He has to be our everything. Abraham knew God. He was connected to God. And he became his source. He didn't depend on other things. He depended on God. It is a process. It is a process. If you want God to become your resource, you got to be ready to shed some tears. Um, you got to be ready to call on God. Um, I remember... Uh, some time ago, I was in the church, and um, we needed help. And I came to the church, and I said, God, you're my source. But I didn't say it like that. I was broken. I was crying. I said, God... You open doors, God. 
And God, you, 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 you open these doors. You have to provide for us, God. And guess what? That's what God wanted. Was it that God could not afford it? No. God wanted me right there. And I said, okay, I got you. I get it. And last of all, if you want God to be your provider, it's important that we honor God. The Bible says Abraham took the ram, verse 13, 22, 13, and he offered it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So immediately, Abraham uh, honored God. He recognized that God his was provision, and he gave back to God. This is an area where a lot of people struggle with is giving back to God. This is one of the hardest areas for a lot of people. Um, how can I give to God if I'm already struggling? Well, when God is your source, when God is your provider, you give back to God, and that is where the miracle happens. A young lady came to our church. She had been out of a bad relationship. She started coming to our church. And immediately, one of the things that she started doing was giving to God. Tithe. Here's my tithe, God. And the blessing of God just started coming and coming and coming out of nothing to provision. Why? She honored God. And one of the things that Abraham did, he said, God, you're my provider, so I'm going to honor you. I'm going to honor you today. Um, tithing is a recognition that God is your provider. Tithing, giving back to God, is a recognition that God is our provider. And I believe this is one of the things that sometimes it can be challenging for us. But it opens up God's blessing. It opens up the provision of God. Um, it's a fearful thing to put your trust in God. It's fearful. Let's be honest. What do you think Abraham was doing when he was going up the mountain with his son? Uh, was he hopping along, just dancing? No. He's like, oh, God, help. Lord, I believe, I believe, Lord. Um, the blessing of God is upon you guys. God's blessing upon your pastors. Um, the Bible tells us that God provided for this man, Abraham. Is he any different than you and me? No. But we have to, our words, very important. Um, we have to remember and this is the most important thing. Any of you here parents? Let me see. Parents. You're a parent. Okay. How you give or how you make God your provider, you're going to pass it on. You're going to pass it on to the next generation. Okay. To your children. And what you're passing on is the blessing of God upon your life. Just recently I had a talk with a young man in our church and um, I said, look, man, you know, I, I was encouraging him about tithing 
And I said, look, your mom's a tither. Your grandmother's a tither. The blessing of God has been passed on to you through your parents. And one day, he might have children, he's going to pass it on to the next generation. Abraham passed it on to Isaac. Isaac passed it on to Jacob. And Jacob passed it on to others. God is your provider. So let's go ahead and stand to our feet. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are our God. You are our help. And you are our blesser. Father God, we thank you today, God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, thank you, my God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Praise you, my God. Thank you, Father. You know, today, before I, we pray for you, I want to make an invitation for someone that might, for the first time, or re wants to rededicate their life to God. You want to give God a chance in your life. You want to uh, uh, allow God to help you. We just want to make help you, uh, and just have a quick prayer with you today. And um, you want God to change you. You want God's help. I remember coming into a church just like that. Young man, broken, on drugs. And then one day, I remember I came together with a friend of mine. And we came to an altar and we were both crying and we didn't know why. It was God touching our lives. And I said, oh my gosh, this is better than any drug. This is better than anything that I've tried in my life. It was the Spirit of God in our hearts. So today, if you haven't accepted Christ into your life, and or you want to rededicate your life to God, please raise your hand. We want to pray with you. We want the blessing of God upon your life. Anybody here today, you want to accept Jesus into your heart. Make Jesus your source, God your source. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Praise the living God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. One more time. Anybody here that you want to accept Christ into your heart? I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Nothing like that. I'm just, I don't want you to miss out on God. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Okay. We're going to move on with our service. One thing we want to do, let's give God a big hand. Let's begin to worship God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, my God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, almighty God. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, my God. In the name of Jesus. So, what we want to do today is, uh, you know, we want to pray for the blessing of God. God's blessing upon your life. So, today, there is something you want God to bless you with. It could be material, it could be health, it could be relational, whatever it is, only you and God knows. But it's important that you take that step of faith and you come to the front so we can pray for you and believe God with you for the blessing of God. So today... If you want to step out of your seats and come and just stand here in the front, we just want to pray with you. Maybe Pastor Gilbert, Sister Esther, you guys can help us pray for all those that will come today in the name of Jesus.